Hey there, safe crackers. Get your combinations ready because it is time for the comic vault, and it's open. And what are we pulling out today? We have Abe Sapien, the Abyssal Plane, a little two-issue mini. And I'll say this: uh, I'm almost never disappointed by any of the things connected to Hellboy BPRD. Uh, I always get a kick out of them. Uh, they're not necessarily all complicated. They're not necessarily all big character pieces. Uh, this one is neither complicated nor a character piece. But I did have a good time reading it. Uh, so do I suggest it? Sure. Why not? Uh, this one is, the story is by Mike McDonald and John Arcudi. I'm not sure how to say that guy's name, but uh, I always I always enjoy Magnolia's stories. So the interesting thing about the Abyssal Plane is not necessarily there's there's not a huge character arc for Abe Sapien, which uh, it's contrary to the the main title. Uh, I would like if if it's about Abe Sapien generally, or if Abe Sapien is a title character generally, I get excited because I want to read something about Abe Sapien. I think comic book Abe Sapien is so much more interesting than movie Abe Sapien that uh, so much so that I just get excited when I see that name at the top of a book. So I was a little disappointed when I got to the end and realized that the the story wasn't about him. Anyway, moving on. So. The story is really about this particular uh, uh, artifact and how that affects the the world and the people that it touches, and uh, it's it's really it's kind of sad and it's kind of brooding. And uh, the ending of the story is not exactly pleasant. Uh, uh, again, nobody really gets hurt. It's just not exactly pleasant, and uh, you end up having this uh, dissatisfied, sad pit in your stomach, and you understand why it ends the way it does, but you wish that uh, there would be a little more resolution to it. I will say that this two issue mini could have very easily been a four or five issue mini. Uh, I feel like there could have been more intrigue to it that made this more of uh, an important, or made this more important to an overall plot. Uh, as it stands, uh, essentially, it's about there is this helmet that prevents you from dying as long as you're wearing it, or as long as you're close to it, apparently. Uh, and the myth is that there was some guy who lasted this entire battle, took off the helmet, and uh, promptly died. So, <laughs> uh, he won the war, but he took the helmet off and he, and he died. But, uh, I, which I find interesting. It's a cool, interesting idea. A helmet that gives you at least temporary immortality. But, uh, there's, this artifact is being transported on this submarine. Submarine crashes. We find this out at the beginning of the story. And uh, then this man who is charged to take care of it is drowned with everyone on the submarine and uh, shipwrecked, or not shipwrecked, but uh, uh, they're all on the bottom of the ocean, just dead. <laughs> so, uh, Abe Sapien and a bunch of the guys from uh, uh, BPRD, or at least people involved with those special sciences type of thing, uh, they go out to this this particular site that they believe this ship, this uh, this sunken ship, to be, and they dive down, go get the helmet, bring it up. Now, there is a person that's right at the beginning of the story that is the protector of it, and uh, he's been dead for quite a long time, or at least presumably dead, and he's been at the bottom of the ocean, completely submerged in water. You'd think he'd be dead. So anyway, uh, they bring the helmet up, and guess who follows? The protector. Now that's the point of the story. What's what I find interesting about the uh, about this particular zombie, uh, this particular version of the undead. Usually, you see uh, the Romero version of the zombie, or you see somebody who's making sort of a bastardization of the Romero version of the zombie. Like, what if Romero zombies could run? Uh, calm down, Danny Boyle and Zack Snyder. So. That's not fair. Danny Boyle zombies are, are not traditional zombies. They're infected humans. They can die. But, uh, where was I? Oh yeah, so this zombie in the Abyssal Plane is just an undead who is waiting to have finished his task. So it's kind of sad. Here's, here's a guy who made a promise at some point in his life, and, and uh, he's having to maintain that promise until it's completed, but it's not completed because he's 
this is never going to be done. He's never going to be done protecting this helmet. It's really sad. Uh, this is an existence that is not preferable to any other existence, or at least living existence. It's, 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 it's pretty sad. So there's not a lot to it. Uh, I would recommend it just because it's this particular story is kind of a fun novelty, but there there is an Abe Sapien story that's longer that is about Abe Sapien, and, well, let's be honest, it's it's a little more interesting than this, uh, because you get, in, you get to know more about Abe Sapien and the world of BPRD, and uh, this is just about some guy who sunk in a ship, and while interesting, uh, did not have enough meat on its bones to really carry me through. Uh, I, I really wish this was a longer story that had more to it because I feel like we went out for somebody's day job. Uh, I feel like I'm riding in the car of a delivery guy. They go out, they find out something, they determine that it's nothing particularly important, and then they let it be. So I don't know if this is connected to a larger series. I would be interested to know if it's connected to a larger series, but why make it a two of two? And why make it a two issue miniseries? if it's connected to something else. So I would like there to be some relevance to what happened in the story. I don't like this slice of life thing. I find it dull. Especially when the, the character arc is static and it's about somebody we just found out about. So it's hard for me to sympathize when I want a little bit more. So uh, thanks for watching the Comic Vault, guys. Uh, as always, the Comic Vault is vast and ominous. It is unknowably, ungodly huge. <laughs> and if you would like to donate something to the Comic Vault, doesn't matter what it is, uh, send us what you like. Go to, or go to, like it's an internet site. Uh, send those things to uh, Geekvolution, P.O. Box 14183, Lenexa, Kansas, 66285. Uh, as always, I'm Vince. Thanks for watching the Comic Vault. We'll catch you later on Geekvolution!